guys, we're here with our November wrap up. It's been raining like crazy in Vancouver, so we've all been getting lots of indoor reading done. Uh, so let's have a look at what we've read this month. So first up, I read Grace and Fury by Tracy Banghart, which is a new book coming out in July of next year. It is a high fantasy novel um, about two sisters. First we have Serena, who's the older of the two, and she's been trained her entire life to become a Grace. And what a Grace is, is essentially a woman that the heir to the throne has chosen to stand beside him and kind of lead as an example of what a perfect woman is. And then her younger sister, Nomi, who's really rebellious and headstrong, she's been trained her whole life to be her sister's handmaiden. Um, things go awry when her younger sister is actually chosen to be the heir's grace instead of her. Something pretty disastrous happens at the beginning of the book, which causes the sisters to be split up. And then the entire rest of the story is all about them trying to fight to get back to each other and save one another. I found this book to be such a fast-paced and interesting read, and I really liked just how it focused on the love between sisters more than anything else, and I would highly recommend it. All right, so one of the first books I read this month was Glory O'Brien's History of the Future by A.S.K. Now this is probably one of the strangest books I have ever read, but it was super good and very interesting. Um, in this book we follow our main character, Glory O'Brien, who when she was four years old, her mother committed suicide and she has grown up her entire life kind of thinking that's going to be her destiny as well. It deals with her kind of grief and uh, almost lack of emotion at times as well, and as well as with her friendship with her best friend who lives across the road who is also part of a cult. One evening the girls are hanging out drinking beer and they find a petrified bat, which sound, yep sounds pretty weird, <laughs> and they decide that they're going to add it to the beer they're drinking and they basically consume a powdered and petrified bat. After this event, uh, both her, both Glory and her friend start getting visions of the future. And the future that Glory sees is kind of like almost like a dystopian society. Um, the world has kind of gone to hell and in it she kind of sees how her role will be impactful on the future and she decides to start writing down these visions and she calls the book that she's writing the history of the future. Again, super strange, uh, very quirky. A.S. King is known for kind of writing quirky books and characters. This is definitely the weirdest of hers that I've read. Um, but I really, really enjoyed it and I definitely recommend you pick it up. The first book on my list this month is Yes Please by Amy Poehler. I actually read this book when it first came out a few years ago, but I'd never actually listened to Amy Poehler read it herself. So that's what I did this month. And I just loved it. Uh, as I mentioned in the beginning of the video, it's been raining a lot in Vancouver and it's always just the kind of, the time of year where it's easy to get a little bit gloomy. So having this really funny, whip-smart woman in my ear was just such a treat, and uh, I loved every second of it. She's she's so funny, she's so caring and warm, and uh, I've been obsessed with her since I was a teenager, so I will for sure be listening to it again, and I recommend that you do as well. Another book that I absolutely loved this month was Long Way Down by Jason Reynolds. This is a really unique story. It's told in verse, and the whole story takes place within 60 seconds in an elevator ride. And I don't really want to say much more than that, um, because I think it's important to go into this book kind of blind and just let the story unfold itself to you as you read it. It's a very quick read, and it's really heartfelt as well. So if you haven't read it yet, I definitely recommend it, and I can't wait to pick up more by Jason Reynolds. Next I have If I Was Your Girl by Meredith Russo. Uh, now this book came out last year and it was getting all sorts of buzz around booktube and I finally went and picked it up and I totally understand the hype behind this book. This is a wonderfully poignant contemporary novel all about a transitioned trans girl who goes to a new school. The plot itself is pretty simple and lovely and um, it really, her story really resonates throughout this. You get to see a lot of flashbacks to see how Amanda ended up where she is today. This is an own voices novel, uh, Meredith Russo um, wrote a very important afterword in this book as well, uh, and I think it's important that if you read this book you make sure to pay attention to the author's note at the end of the book as well, because it really brings um, a whole new light to the situation. I think this book is really important and will remain important, and I definitely recommend you pick it up. The next one on my list is Granted by John David Anderson. John David Anderson is a fantastic middle grade author, and he's come out with a few really great ones. He came out with Posted in 2017, and this one comes out in February of next year. Um, but it's all about Ophelia Delphinium Fidgets, who is a fairy, 
um, and she is a granter, which means that her job in the fairy world is to grant wishes. And this is the, the very first job assignment that she gets. The way that he's created the fairy world and like explains the the mechanisms behind how all the wishes in the world get granted is so fun and original and uh, I really enjoyed this one. Another book that I absolutely adored this month was Children of Blood and Bone by Tomi Adeyemi. This is a super unique fantasy story. Um, it comes out in March. This story takes place in a world where there used to be a lot of different people who could manipulate magic in really unique um, ways. But then, under the order of a very ruthless king, all of these people were targeted and killed and magic was taken away from the land entirely. Our main character, Zaylee, is given one last chance to bring back magic and she sets off on a very um, harrowing quest with a rogue runaway princess and her older brother and they also are being chased by the princess's brother, the crown prince. I was initially really intimidated to pick this up just because it is a really long book um, and it's a very involved fantasy world, but as soon as you kind of get into the world, get into learning the different terms in the book, the adventure just takes off from there and I highly enjoyed it. It's um, inspired by the author's uh, Nigerian folklore kind of background and I just love, you can feel the love that she's put into this book. Next, I have a book that totally took me by surprise, and that is Elusive by Emily Lloyd Jones. So I picked this up because uh, she wrote The Hearts We Sold, which we included in our August Allocate box, and I really enjoyed that book. So when, but when I picked this up, this book is very different than that, but so much fun. So this book takes place in a world in which a virus was plaguing humanity, and the vaccine that they made to cure this has side effects that gave some of the population superpowers. So this plague has been cured, um, but the superpower, but because these people were getting superpowers, the inventor of the vaccine decided he was going to destroy it completely, and so there's no trace of it left. The government has also deemed these new people, um, they either need to work for the government or be deemed a traitor, and we follow a teenage girl in this book named Sierra, who has, who is an elusive, who can kind of flash herself, who kind of works in a crime syndicate to avoid the government. This book is super fast-paced and really fun. It's obviously quite serious in a lot of the things they're doing, um, but the way that it's written is very lighthearted and the characters have a lot of witty banter and I just really love um, stories about teens with superpowers in any way. Um, so this book really spoke to me. It was very good and I think it deserves more buzz. The last one on my list this month was Dark Matter by Blake Crouch. This is a sci-fi novel that I knew very little going into, but uh, I really, really liked it. I ripped through it in like two days, I think. Um, I don't tend to be a huge sci-fi person, but this one was very much like grounded and like explained all the physics behind it. And so I found it very readable. Basically the main character is a physics professor uh, and he um, goes out to meet a friend for drinks one night and on his way home, he's kidnapped by a man in a mask. When he wakes up, he's in another timeline basically. Uh, and everybody knows who he is, but he has no idea who anybody else is. Um, so it's this very cool exploration of the multiverse theory and how every choice you make in the world has an effect and a sort of sliding doors result that uh, everything splits off into a different option. This was by far the best thriller I've read in a really long time. The ending was super intense and I highly recommend it if you want to be on the edge of your seat. All right, so that was just a few of the books that we really loved in the month of November. We'd love to hear some of the books that you enjoyed this month as well. Let us know in the comments down below. And as per usual, please like this video and give it a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel. Happy reading and thanks for being awesome. Bye. Bye-bye.